Oh, we've decided to put a surgical team and crew into a submarine, reduce it way down in size, and inject it into an artery. You mean I'm going along? As part of the crew, yes. Wait a minute. They can't shrink me. I'm miniaturized. I can shrink anything. But I don't want to be miniaturized. All right, so this is part three of the Proteus build. Uh, the last time uh, we were talking about the photo etch set from Paragraphics that was set to come out last week that has been delayed until this week. So uh, I didn't continue on any of those, but I did go ahead and work on some more of the uh, snorkel. Uh, the snorkel itself and the hose is completed. What I'm working on now is the housing and the mechanism that will extend it and extract it back into the sub. So I got a lot of that done and completed, worked out pretty well. I did run into a couple of snags with some of the space within the sub, and we'll go over that and I'll show you that and some of the ideas that I'm working on to get that to work. Uh, in addition, I started working on uh, one of the hatchways that I'm going to give the ability to open and close. And uh, because I have the two kits, I can cannibalize parts and make that happen. So we'll look at that as well. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. In the last video, I showed you how I am using uh, basically a badge, a mechanism that you put on your belt, and it has an extender. And this is one half of it that I broke off. And uh, as I showed you in the last part, I trimmed it way down and I got smaller pieces so they can actually fit inside the sub. So the bottom of this is the other side of that. And it has, you can see the center there, it actually has uh, the center piece and the little coil spring goes inside of it and that's what gives it the tension uh, and then what I did was I made a ring here to hold it and basically all I did was take a tube from some uh, soldering wire and it's the right thickness that I could fit on that so I cut that off and sanded it down and hollowed it out a bit so it would fit inside of there and uh, and this is what I came up with so this is glued together and it's one piece. Uh, this top part actually swivels and it gets tension. You can see that the, it moves around, the spring has tension. So when I'm done, this will be inside and then the actual cord will wrap around it. And so it will be able to pull it and give it tension so when it comes out, it'll pull it back in. So that'll give me the effect that I want to extend it and extract it and pull it back in. Uh, and what I've done so far is I've glued a little piece of tubing on the top and I made a lid. And this is just another half of it. And this just goes on top. And uh, once I'm done, I'll glue that together. So you can see that's more of the little pulley put that on there, kind of mechanism where it can wrap the cord around it. And then with once inside the sub, this will be glued onto a base. So it'll be solid. So the bottom piece is stationary, it doesn't move. This white ring on top and the, the clear cylinder around it with the lid will move. That whole thing will rotate and have tension. And that's where the cord will wrap around and give it some tension. In addition, I created a little, a little pulley here so far. Uh, basically the similar thing, some styrene tube, and I glued some ends on it, drilled it out, and put some, put a piece of brass tubing between it, so this will ro rotate around. Uh, and so when the snorkel hose comes inside of the sub, it'll go through a pulley, come down onto this, wrap around, and have some tension to it. Um, so these mechanisms are pretty well done, other than gluing these two together. And, uh, and they, they work for what I want them to do. The problem we're running into right now is space within the sub. So I can have this inside and not have it showing in any of the interior. Uh, so we'll take a look at that. Um, meanwhile, let me show you a couple of shots of creating this little pulley. And I can make some more of those. It's pretty basic, but it'll let that uh, the uh, hose coming in, the little elastic string go around it so I can I can 
position it and move it down to, to the little tensioner here. All right, so let's take a look here. So here's the top half of the Proteus, and what I've done is I've gone ahead and positioned the snorkel in there, and I have a ring underneath it to keep it in the right position, and that's kind of what it's going to look like when it's done, uh, sticking up a little bit. It's just in there temporarily, and I, uh, I'm holding this tape on it to keep it from falling out. And uh, what I want to show you is the inside, and uh, and what that's going to end up coming through as. And as you can see. There's the snorkel coming through. So it's a little more of an extension than I had originally expected. It was hard to judge until I made it, but it's sticking down pretty low. So uh, I need to make a mechanism. I need to make some space so that this fits inside. So when I have the mechanism in place, it's going to not be showing through the interior uh, when you're looking inside it. Now, the back of the lab is going to be built and it's gonna be viewable through this back window here, but it's not gonna really be seen otherwise. So really it's it's this main part right here. Uh, this is actually the ceiling obviously when it's turned upside down and I don't wanna see this hose sticking through when you look back. So I need to have that covered up. And what that is gonna be like is that when this inner wall goes in, it actually goes right about here and then from the inside, you wouldn't really see that gap, but that's where I wanted the snorkel and the mechanism to go, but obviously that's going to be a problem. The snorkel is going to be sticking up too high, and it's going to be visible. Uh, and then ultimately what I'm going to have is this mechanism here. It's going to be down in here or against this wall in some fashion. And then the pulley that I made, I wanted to position this way so that the hose can go over at the cord, go down into the mechanism down in here and keep that all, you know, well attached so it can be uh, pulled free and have tension uh, and, and have it pretty well solid. So the problem we're running into is this little space in here is just not enough for all this. And, and now it turns out that this is going to be extending in too long. So it's going to go past this. So an idea that I'm working on a couple of things is that uh, the back lab, I'm going to build it, and it's going to be painted, and it'll be visible, but only through these windows. I'm not going to be that worried about as much detail. But this wall here, which you'll see sticking back, is going to be very visible. So what I want to do is I want to cut off parts of this. Basically, just cut out this square right here. And I have two kits, as I said, so I can have two parts of it. So cut out this main part and just picture this upside down and basically glue it along here. Glue it flush with this back part. So from the back, you're going to see that wall. You're not going to see anything in front of it. All of this will be hidden and this cord will be shortened quite a bit once I'm done. Um, but all of this here is going to be hidden in this area. And then on the second part from the second kit, I'll still have this over here. Uh, but you'll just see basically the doorway. And then this part that'll be glued on here, I'll just kind of make it flush, build it up so it looks like it just extends a little bit. Uh, so that everything over here, which will include the hose and the mechanism, and all those pieces, uh, they're going to be hidden so they won't be seen from the front of the back. Uh, and also what that will allow me to do is that uh, these controls right here, I'll get a better view there, uh, the photo etch set which is coming out, it's supposed to include all of the, oh, it's really bright, all of the uh, panels for these that they can be lit. So I'm thinking about lighting that and the other side walls. So once again, I'd have to light it from back here. That's really not going to work, obviously, if you can see the, the lighting and the wiring from behind it. So that'll help me do both things. So I can have this here 
and uh, basically it'll just be this half with the doorway and the stairs. The other half will be uh, visible from the front, but not the back. The back you'll be seeing the other part that I cannibalize here. And, um, and that way I can hide that mechanism. I'd rather sacrifice some of the accuracy in the back lab, since that's not going to be as visible, than the actual front cabin, because all of that's going to be visible from all of these big giant windows in the hatchway and everything else. So that's a little more important to me to get that working. So uh, I'm going to work on that a little bit, get that cut out, get that ready to go. Uh, and then once it's done, uh, this will be over in this area. And I'm thinking about either mounting it this way to position it so the, the cord comes up and over that pulley. Uh, or I also have the ability to put it horizontally. Oops, sorry for the lighting there. Um, I can also put it this way. So we'll see. I have a little bit of room to do it. Um, but uh, definitely, if I can get that working. Another thing I'm going to do is this top piece here. When it's This is still going to be connected to the floor. So this will be on the bottom of the kit. The piece that I cut out will be glued to the top of the kit. And so when I put the two halves together, they should be positioned correctly. Um, but with this piece here, the way that it's designed when it's glued in, when it's here, it really does, it extends over too far and, it, and it's blocking this base of the snorkel. It's getting a little too close to this part here. So I'm also going to cut out on the front part a good part of this here. Uh, and what I'm actually doing is making it more accurate. Uh, this is one of the parts that, for some reason, uh, they left out a really big part that the, the actual sub had in the movie. Uh, on the front of this, there's an actual piece that comes along here. It curves up. It's extended out. Uh, and that's just not here at all. And um, I believe the, the nice thing about this actual set in the movie uh, is that it was a very practical set. The parts came apart. Uh, they could film in different places. They could disassemble it, put it on these giant sets. And, uh, and the actors actually sat inside the sub. And, you know, so all these parts actually worked. So I think that piece that's missing really did house the hosing for the snorkel. Uh, because in the movie, the uh, pilot was sitting in the bubble and one of the actors came up on the top and he released the snorkel and he pulled it out and it had a big hose on it. So it obviously had a part inside of the actual set that they made look like a submarine. And they could take walls off of it and they could uh, film with different angles and things like that. So that will help me as well because that will help me to take off this top part right up here so that this piece here that would normally be interfering with the snorkel will be gone as well. And this whole part here will extend out. Uh, and I'll show you some pictures of that from the movie as well here in a second and give you an idea of what that's going to look like. Um, and so that'll help me build that. So I'm going to start working on that and I'll uh, hopefully get some of that done for this video. Uh, but let's go ahead and we'll take a look at the uh, part from the movie that shows that top part that's missing here. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about the, the hatches that I started working on. And here's some work I've already begun on the hatchways that are going to have uh, lids that can open and on the top and the bottom of the sub. So uh, what I've done is I've gone ahead and taken one of them so far. And here's what it looks like from the kit. One solid piece, of course, uh, with some material. It's kind of cool. And it has a little ring inside that you turn and also on the top. Uh, and these will be painted 
uh, like a satin yellow. Uh, and so uh, there's two for the kit, one for the top, one for the bottom. They have a little notch that fits in. I'll show you here in a minute. And the way they did it's kind of cool. They, they're both the same. They're identical. Uh, so even though the hatch placement is different, the notch is set to fit in the same way on top and bottom. So I've taken one of them so far, and I've cut out all of the part uh, with a little bit of rough edges still, but all of the part that would be the actual hatch itself, and just ended with the ring that has the notch in the bottom, and it goes down inside the sub. So uh, that's almost finished. It's a little rough. It needs to be sanded down a bit. I need to sand off a little more of these little edges here. Uh, so this will be the final piece, and then uh, I'll do the same, the opposite, where I'll cut off everything else but the hatch and these little bands that go up just to this little flat part. So it's going to be a little delicate, but I'll get these little parts right on the edge. Uh, and then I'll come up with some mechanism to put a hole through and put a pin through the center part so it can, it can open and close. Uh, I was thinking originally about some kind of a spring or tensioner, but the more I thought of it, I probably don't need that. As long as I can get a pin that's fairly tight, as long as it comes up and has a little bit of friction, it'll go back shut. Um, and then once I'm done, once I cut this off, I will use some styrene stripping to make a little edge in it so that it, when it closes, it goes down inside this little ring. Uh, and I might try to make that fairly snug so the only thing I don't want to happen is when the sub is uh, I pick it up moving around I don't want the hatch falling open on the bottom especially so I'll make that I'll still working on that part of it but uh, let me kind of show you what that's gonna look like here so we have the top of the sub and basically it's gonna go So this one goes sideways, so. All right, so once that's inside, it's gonna be flush. And, uh, and that part is gonna be uh, glued into place, of course, onto the sub here. Get in. There we go, okay. So that'll be glued in, and then the hatch will be opened and closed on top of it. And, uh, and that'll allow me to look inside of it, so it'll be kind of neat. And then on the inside, there's the sub. And I'll finish that off. I'll fill in the gaps there. And the inside's going to be painted the gray uh, with the interior. The outside will be painted the, the satin yellow. Uh, so both the ring itself that'll be attached and the... Uh, the hatch that will open will also be that. And on the inside of the hatch, that's gonna be painted the gray as well to match inside of the sub. Uh, so this will be visible inside of the sub and the outer part uh, will not. And I'll have an additional ring so that that will have a little bit of a snug fit. Uh, so let's take a look as well on the bottom of the kit. And as I showed earlier, the bottom, I'm going to have the airlock opened up so you can see below, see inside. So I've started to enlarge the hole in the actual floor inside of the sub. And there's the bottom hatch. So, likewise, this part will go right there. And this one actually goes... Uh, straight up and down it's not curved but as I said the pin in it is interesting because they, they set it up so that it works but uh, but once that opens you'll be able to see through the top through the bottom and that will look up into the airlock from the bottom of the sub and I'll have some detail on that once I finish scratch building that as well uh, so both of these are going to be identical the top and the bottom you can see that that's going to be flush and um, and as I said, when this is upside down, I don't want the hatch falling open on its own. So I'll give it some, a bit of a tight fit. 
and figure out some way. I might still have to consider some type of a spring-loaded thing. But uh, we'll have that working as well and, uh, and have the top and bottom hatches uh, ready to go for that also. So, All right. And here's the nearly finished two sections of the hatch. I showed you previously the part that will go down inside the base that will be glued on. I've taken another hatch and I sanded the rest of it away, cut it away, to get just the actual hatch that will open up and the two parts that will go on the top. Uh, still a little rough, but I'm working on that. So in the end, this will go on to here. And of course, I'll have some pins to hold these in place so that they'll open up. Uh, as I said before, I'm probably not going to use any type of a spring. I probably won't need to. As you can see, this is already a little bit of a tight fit, and that'll work in my favor. So once I have a pin on it, I don't think I'll have too much trouble getting that to, to have a nice solid attachment. There we go. And then in the inside, I'm going to make a rim. Inside of here, I'm going to use some thin styrene to make an edge that will go down inside of that lip as well. So let's take a look at it on the actual sub. And here is the nearly finished hatch on the top of the sub. And once that's glued in place, this top part will open up. ahead and show you the other side of that. Alright, there we go. Very nice. Alright, so some rough edges of course, but uh, and this will have to be filled in when it's glued in place. Uh, but it's coming along very nicely. Uh, so that's one of the hatches and I'll do the same thing for the bottom hatch. Uh, and as I said, these are identical. The way that that works is that it has that little bit of a notch and they're the same for both halves uh, it's just the positioning of this little notch right here so on the top that notch goes in like so there we go. okay on the bottom of the sub it's aligned differently so it'll fit like this but uh but in the end, they'll both work the same way. Uh, so that's coming along very nicely. Still some rough edges to finish up. And as I said, I need to use some styrene to put a little lip inside of there. So when this comes down, it will fit snugly inside of there. Uh, and I think it'll work nicely. I don't think I'll need any type of a spring mechanism once I get A little pin and I'm not going to take it all the way through I'm simply going to drill a hole in each side and then affix just a very thin little pin so that just enough to hold that in place uh, but otherwise the the molding of it keeps it nicely positioned and then that opens up very nicely so all right well that's going to wrap up this video for today uh, I'll be working some more on the uh, parts inside to hold the mechanism for the snorkel and still awaiting the photo etch set and then we'll be progressing so getting some nice progress here uh, very pleased with how these are turning out all right thank you